In this lesson, we're going to cover how to create a quiz in Moodle. I'm logged into the course and I am going to go ahead and click on add an activity or resource. We're going to go to quiz and this is the same method for creating a quiz, a test or a final exam. They basically use the same activity. So we're going to click on quiz. We're going to call this syllabus quiz. And this is a quiz for demonstration purposes. Usually my syllabus quiz has several questions, at least 10 questions. In this example, we're just going to create a basic quiz, a very simple one that has th three different types of questions, a multiple choice, true and false, and a um, short answer type of a question. And each one is going to be worth five points. Let me go ahead and zoom in over here. And um, so I put in a basic description uh, for the quiz. And then in terms of timing, I usually like to give my students about one week to complete a quiz. And um, so we'll just go ahead and um, click on enable. And today is the 25th. So I'm going to go ahead and give them seven days from that. And I like my quizzes or my deadlines to typically end at 4 p.m. So that's 1600 hours, which is military time. And in terms of time limit, this is how long you want to give your students. And if you go back to the description over here, uh, basically you like to give my students 15 minutes. Um, and this is 15 minutes usually for 10 questions. Since I'm only asking them three questions, I'll probably reduce this to uh, let's say about six minutes. So they've got about two minutes per question, which should be plenty for this basic quiz. So we're going to enable and we're going to say six minutes. So this is going to be a timed quiz. And when the time expires, I'm having the setting so that the quiz automatically submits it into Moodle. Um, otherwise, the students would actually have to click on submit and um, I just want it to automatically be submitted. Let's go to grade. For the grade category, we're going to click here and select quizzes and exams. And we're going to leave the grade to pass blank. I'm not going to go ahead and select that. Attempts allowed. You can pick as many times as you want to. I personally only allow my students to take my quizzes one time. Although there is a pedagogical uh, perspective that states in certain courses, a repetition is extremely important. So for example, I've got a colleague who teaches computer information systems. Therefore, he prefers that his students retake quizzes over and over and over again until they basically master the content and memorize it. And that way they're able to also earn a better grade. Um, in my particular case, this is a syllabus quiz. So uh, the students are required to read the quiz, the syllabus, understand it, and then basically remember the um, expectations that they have for this course. So I only allow them one time. For layout, I typically like to have only one question appearing to the student per page. So I will change the default from every question to never all questions on one page. Okay. For question behavior, this is helpful if you've got multiple choice questions and if you want to minimize the chances of students uh, cheating or texting each other or taking the quiz at the same time. And what it basically does is it ensures that, you know, if one student is looking at a question, another student in class is looking at a different question of that number. So my number one question is going to be different than the number one question for another student. So you can shuffle within the questions. So you can shuffle the actual uh, questions. You can also shuffle the answers within a question if you want to. So we're going to leave this as yes. For review options, this, this gives you a whole lot of um, features in terms of what you want your students to be able to see immediately after they've completed a quiz, uh, during the quiz, or perhaps after the quiz closes. And personally, what I like to do is um, I will allow the students to basically see uh, their grade. Um, overall feedback, if you choose to insert overall feedback, I usually don't. Um, and then after the quiz is closed, you can allow them to basically see the attempt, uh, whether they got something correct or wrong, um, to get a little bit more feedback. And the reason that I usually like to do this after the quiz is closed, because this ensures that 
when people are looking at uh, feedback or they're reviewing their quiz, they're not able to take a screenshot or share correct answers with their classmates. So once again, this is a method to minimize uh, cheating where possible. So I'm going to go ahead and only allow them to basically see the details of the quiz after the deadline has met and it's closed. So that way um, it's available to stu all of the students at the same time only after it is no longer available for them to take it. Uh, the rest are basically optional appearance. Um, you show you use this picture. This is helpful if you've got your students taking the quiz inside of a classroom on a computer and you basically want to ensure that um, the student is taking their quiz. So you can select small image or large image if you want to. Uh, this is optional. Uh, that's about it. Um, I usually don't like to set any of these other options. You could do overall feedback if you want to. If a student gets 100% or a certain percent, you can provide them with specific feedback. I usually leave that blank. So we're going to go ahead now and click on Save and Display. So all we've done right now is basically um, worked on the settings and the description. So we've got a title, we've got a description, we have the number of attempts, we've got a deadline for when the quiz will close and the time limit for it. We have not actually created the, the questions for the quiz as of yet. So now that we've worked on the settings, what we're going to do now is we are going to click on Edit Quiz. And here is where you can basically add questions to your quiz. And you've got multiple options. If you already had a, a text file or Word document where you've customized your questions, there is a method to upload all of your multiple choice questions or short answer questions or true and false questions. In our case, I actually want to show you how to create those one by one. And I will have another course, which is more of an advanced course that allows you to upload or import, I should say, questions from Word document into Moodle. Um, the, this, the same lesson is also available on YouTube. I've created that for the Faculty Workshop channel. So it's also available over there. However, this is a beginner's course. So we are going to go through the steps of actually learning how to create questions in a quiz. So what we'll do here is we're going to click on Add. And you'll see that you've got several options. New question, question from bank, a random question. So question from bank is basically when you've already uploaded a whole lot of questions to a bank within Moodle and then you can basically select which questions you want to have appear on this particular quiz. In our case we are going to click on new question because we want to create this from scratch. The first question that I have is going to be a true and false question. So you've got a whole lot of different options over here. And at this point, it's pretty self-explanatory. You basically select the type of question and you basically fill in the details for those questions. So we're going to click on true and false. We're going to click on add. And you can give the questions a name if you want to. And what I usually like to do is I will put actually the um, question itself here. And um, I will put the text here as well. Default mark is one. Actually, we're going to change this to five because we did say that this is uh, worth five points. So the question says, reading the assigned chapter is mandatory. And this is where you can basically select what, whether this question or statement is true or false. And in this particular case, it is true. So we're going to select true. And we are going to save and continue editing. We're going to check our work. Everything looks good. Okay, let's go ahead and preview this question just to see what it looks like. So this is what the students are going to see on their screen. They're going to get this question. Question number one, reading these signed chapters is mandatory, true or false? So if they select true, they're going to get five points. And if they select false, they are going to, they're going to get zero. All right, so let's go ahead and close this. We're going to save our changes. So there is a question that we just added and it's worth five points. We're going to add a, another one, and this time we are going to do a multiple choice question. We're going to put the text for the question right over here. And this is a long question, so I'm just going to shorten the title and just call it technical difficulty. So part of the question is basically going to be the name. And the students don't see the question name. This is really for you on the back end when you're basically... Um, uh, looking through the quiz bank or the list of questions that you have. All right, so this is multiple choice. So we've got the question right over here and the students are going to have the option of picking um, 
from for multiple options. So let's go ahead and select five points over here. And you're gonna have the option of selecting one or multiple answers. And in this particular question, this only has one correct answer. So there's only one correct answer in this particular question. And it's gonna ask you if we wanna shuffle the choices. And I'm gonna say, no, let's not shuffle the choices. You can actually shuffle the answers around if you want to. So we're gonna go down here and we are going to put the correct, we're gonna put the different options. So choice one will be telephone. And the grade for that is gonna be none because this is not the correct answer. So that's basically what you need to do. So if the answer is correct, you will put 100%. If it is not the correct answer, if it's uh, the, the wrong answer, you will put basically um, none. So the second option is going to be, or the second choice that students will get is going to be in person, which is also not the correct answer. And you can also put feedback over here. So you can say incorrect when students answer this question. I usually leave that blank. It's not necessary because they're already going to see the uh, red X mark if it's, if it's not correct. The third choice is going to be email. And the last choice is going to be none of the above. And the correct answer here is going to actually be email. So the answer is going to be this one right here. So we'll do 100%. So you can have more choices if you want to, we don't. We are going to click on uh, save changes. There is the question right there. And if you wanted to see what it looks like, we can always go ahead and click on uh, the question itself. We'll scroll down, we'll click on preview. And this is what the students are gonna see. If I experience any technical difficulty while taking a quiz or exam, I should contact the professor by, and the correct answer should be email. So that's how you create multiple choice questions. All right, let's go ahead and do one more example. And this time we are going to do a uh, general short answer. So students will actually have to type in a answer. And so we're gonna go and do a short answer question. And we're gonna make this a simple one. What is the name of your professor? This is gonna be worth five points. And the answer is gonna be, let's say you wanna provide your students multiple variations of a correct answer. For example, let's say that um, my students wanted to include my first name and my last name. So we'll go ahead and click on blanks. So the correct answer would be that. But let's say that, you know, I will also accept other variations of my name, such as. So that would also be correct. That variation will also be correct. And let's say that I also want to allow students to use my first name. I can go ahead and also include that as well. So all these different variations of my name, if typed in in those formats are all gonna be accepted. So that is how we create short answer questions. We're gonna go ahead and save. Actually, let's go ahead and preview this before we save. So this is a question, and then students get to type in my name here, and they get to submit it. So this is how it looks on the student end. All right, we're gonna go ahead and save, and we are done with our quiz, and here is our quiz with three questions. Of course, the students are gonna be accessing it from the week one folder. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off editing. So students will basically scroll here. They're gonna see the syllabus quiz. They're gonna click on it, and then they're gonna be able to go ahead and click here to attempt the quiz. It's gonna be timed for six minutes, and they're only gonna be allowed to do this one time.